It's just a matter of, okay. All right, I've got a recording as well, so. Yeah, Claudia is recording. She's ready to go. Oh, here comes Sai. Do 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 do. That sounded very close to the like the rainbow star from Super Mario. That's exactly what that was. Oh, okay. I have a I have a Mario joke for you. Sometime. Oh, we're actually starting now. Sorry. All right, let me know when the screen comes up. Uh, midnight. It's up. I'm gonna ask you to go through and see if you can mute anybody else that's uh, that's not part of the BOD that speaks up. But I think we should be fine. So let's kick it yes, off. Sir. Thanks everybody for joining the BOD meeting for August 15, 2020. Our first task of uh, this session is to review the previous meetings, which I've actually put on the screen already. We'll run through these pretty quickly, but basically this last meeting, the official last meeting was hosted by James Taylor at the time. We had several members of the BOD. I'd say the majority of the BOD was actually present at the time. This was official introduction of myself uh, as well as midnight onto the BOD. I will skip through the guest list on the agenda. We talked about our asset removal. Uh, we basically concluded that we needed a storage unit. And since that time, we have gotten a storage unit. Thanks, Surreal, for working that out. Uh, we went over our authoring results. We removed Blackwater Outpost from the Celestial Kingdom. The board of directors took over the G Suite and web page both. And I think we've seen some, uh, some improvements and directions that have happened since then. Uh, the populace did approve us buying a iPad, but that has not taken place yet with COVID. There's been a little point to buy an iPad. So that is on our future list of things to do. We, we have full authority. It's just a matter of when we need it, we'll get it. Uh, we approved this Square app can be used at the Kingdom and Park level. We kind of trumped this with the ability to take donation, donations and dues both online, but uh, we officially do have approval, so if any parks want to start doing their own square interactions, just get with the BOD. We'll help walk through that. We updated the Kapora. James had put together a new format of the Kapora, basically updating it from a very antiquated letter number system to a, a more easy to read function. So we should be good there. We reimbursed $190 to Marcus for the wash stations at Spring War due to COVID. Uh, there was a Kapora change so that BOD, with full agreement from the Monarch, could suspend Kapora requirements uh, in state of emergency. And we added our election for the IRV format, which is some of you uh, noticed on our most recent election, we actually did this on one of the spots. So very interesting. Josh, I, I would like your thoughts on how that process turned out. Uh, if you want to come off mute real quick and just say yay, nay, whatever. It definitely makes it easier on the KPM just and then because everybody only votes once instead of having to do multiple elections until somebody finally has a majority. Awesome. That's good to hear. Uh, Steam table. I know we approved the uh, selling $200. I don't know if that ever happened. Surreal, do no. you know if we sold that? I believe we just so we left uh, it. junked it and left it there. Junking is good. And then we went over the quarterly report from the treasurer, which was me at the time, and I have since posted that. Outgoing BOD was officially James, myself as a temporary treasurer, Miranda as a monarch, Lessa as the regent, and Brian as the monarch alternate. Incoming was myself, Midnight. Sorry to call out your real name there, Midnight. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do it though. Uh, Amy Baker as monarch, Alyssa as regent, and Miranda as the monarch alternate. We did our board assignments, at which point I was voted into the board of directors president slot. And then to pay Mike Green back for that nomination, I nominated him as treasurer and everybody agreed that he should be treasurer. Uh, and to pay up us back, Mike Green nominated Midnight as membership officer and we all agreed Midnight's gonna be membership, so. And then Ryan rounded us out as secretary. We uh, had two new spots on the suspension review committee. Brian was replaced by Miranda Gibbs and all the, sorry, one new slot. All the other slots were automatic for Kapora. Future business, we had talked about a 501c3, which is mute at this time since we're in COVID. 
uh, surreal. We still need to figure that out at some point, but there are other more pressing issues. And food fight also became mute as soon as COVID hit. So less uh, less important, but we can always pick this back up and talk about it if it's something we determine we need to do and can do given circumstances. Real quick. Yes. Um, food fight is still a go. I just talked to Brett. Uh, we're doing a quick team meeting uh, and then we'll be coming out with announcements. Awesome. Good to know. Uh, please keep us updated because this is the first I've heard of anything food fight related in a while. All right, that is the previous meeting. I did have one unofficial meeting between then and now uh, that we can review, but basically, let me find the document. We had an unofficial BOD, just kind of brainstorming session where we talked about some of the stuff we wanted to do from a technology standpoint. Uh, basically, dues, uh, benefits for people that pay dues. This is a direct result of, of Midnight's newsletter that we rolled out. Uh, I'm sorry, Josh. I thought Josh was short for Josiah. I will change that. Uh, so what we've done is kind of built out the newsletter capabilities. We've got an email address for each park. And if you are dues paid with the valid email address in the ORC, you are automatically every night loaded into that newsletter email distribution list. Uh, you can kind of see here we did some queries to find out how many people from each park were dues paid with valid email address. Uh, at the end of the day, you can see all of our park email addresses that we created. So if you want to message your park and get a, a hold of anybody over email that's dues paid and valid email address, by all means, it's the same acronym that the ORC would use. So like Blood, uh, Blood Tide Coast is BTC. Sorry, I should change that. Uh, at ampguardck.org. Uh, from there, we added dues paid and capabilities like that. But that's our unofficial meeting notes that we had. I just didn't want to hide anything from you guys. This is all we've really talked about in a more official capacity. Secondary treasury report. So Mike, I'm going to open up your treasury report and kind of turn it over to you to walk through if you don't mind. I will do my best. <laughs> I hope so. You created it. Right. Give me just a second to find it. Oh, it's on the wrong screen. There you go. Alrighty. Um, you know, not a whole lot really has gone on with uh, the Treasury since uh, beginning COVID. We had um, started off with a ledger balance of 52.18 as of the end of Jason's last report. Um, notable things, we closed the Chase Bank account completely, so that is no longer an issue that we have to deal with. Um, Pioneer is now our sole uh, bank account. Um, only things of note there really were uh, two checks, one by phone to Camp Lone Star for their payment um, on April 22nd. And then in June, we sent the 685.20 to Lyon County Storage for their uh, rent payment for the six months. Um, and that will come back up again in I want to say November, Surreal. Is that right? You're muted. Uh, November, December, yeah. Okay. Six months from when we signed the contract, which we signed in, in June. So, no, we signed it in May. So, yeah. it's going to be November. Okay, cool. So, that will come back up again in November, probably right before the next uh, BOD meeting. Um. Then PayPal, we were using an account owned by Wilhelm, Kenneth Keys. Um, we have since transferred all the balance from that to the Pioneer Bank account and um, pretty much ended any affiliation with that account. And we created a, a CK specific one linked to the treasurer position. Um, so we shouldn't have to go through anyone else for using their PayPal or anything like that again, which is good. Um, no events due to COVID-19. Um, let's see, we had our Google Suites come out on June 8th. And then on 520, we had the little skedaddle at uh, Cauldron's Keep and 
we uh, rented porta potties for that for 105 that we paid via PayPal. Um, as far as deposits, we had our spring award deposit, a couple of interest paid, some uh, Stripe transfers from people paying dues, and the PayPal transfer from the old account into the or the old PayPal into the Pioneer there. Um, as far as non-event profits, in the second quarter, we only had about five people pay dues, I think. Uh, four for a year and one for um, six months, so $115 there, no donations. Um, interest is listed up in the deposits there, so it was like a, just under $1.50. Um, and then there's... 10 bucks in the treasure packet as far as cash goes on hand as far as I'm aware um, I don't really have anything else we don't have any outstanding checks um, so our ending balance is seven thousand ninety seven dollars and three cents you've got seven thousand eighty seven here and seven thousand ninety seven here is that just a typo or is that for getting no. the ten dollar cash on hand I was including the ten dollar cash on hand okay thanks uh, I saw two things. One from Josiah. Colin, what's up? I want to bring up that the uh, the Pioneer Bank account, for some reason, the bank uh, still has my phone listed as the contact for the secondary authentication. And so we need the somebody who's actually on the account to go in the bank because they let me do it online and transfer it to my phone, but they're not letting Mike do it. So... Um... Actually, after I talked to you about this, um, I sent them that email, and they did do it via the email. So as long as we use okay. the CK Treasurer email, we should be good to go on that. That's as far good to as know. in the future changing that number over. Because I had tried to do it when I was Treasurer, and they told me no, too. So I was you know, passing the buck on to you. Uh, Surreal, you're on mute. I know you had something for of order. Okay, I just wanted to make a clarification. The porta potties that we did pay, the 106, that did come out of the Monarch's monthly discretionary fund, so that wasn't something that the board needed to vote on. I just wanted the people who weren't uh, on the board to understand where those funds came from. That's a good call out. Okay, yeah, I couldn't remember if that was a Monarch thing or what, so thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the great Chewy with us. Chewy, thanks for joining all the way from the wetlands. Oh, no. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry about that. Hey, what up? Hey. So next topic I want to talk about is spring war bids. Obviously, spring war bids were due already. Uh, with COVID going on, we've kind of delayed this. We've initially said the end of August for dues. Uh, we're going to go ahead and push this back again to the end of September for, for bids on spring war. So far, there's only been one interested party that indicates they are looking to submit a bid for Spring War. So if you are interested, give us a heads up, but we are pushing the due date for Spring War bids through the end of September. All of this boils down to COVID uncertainties uh, and insurance uncertainties and site un uncertainties, which we're going to talk about real shortly. Uh, Surreal, I didn't put site discussions on the agenda, but I'm considering that part of Spring War bids. If you would like to give a kingdom update on site selection and where we're at, you're welcome to it. Absolutely. Um, okay, so, uh, I mentioned this in several Zooms already, but you know, I'm always happy to, yeah, let's talk about it because this is official business section. Um, uh, in June, a group of BOD and at-large members uh, met at the potential site, which is Spirit Haven Ranch outside of Flatonia, Texas, which is about an hour and 15 minutes from Buda, uh, and I guess about similar distance from San Antonio. I'm not 100% sure how far that is from San Antonio. Um, and we met with their board members. We walked the facilities. We looked at what they have available, and it was determined that this was our best option for several reasons. Um, the first one is that if we needed to have an event there tomorrow, we could make do with what they have. We don't have to go build anything. We don't have to go buy anything. I mean, it wouldn't be ideal, but we could make do. Um, they are also, another aspect is they are extremely willing to work with us. They want us there. Um, and being wanted to me is, is a very important aspect. 
um, the a, a third part, and, and I'm sorry, the, an additional part of the being wanted aspect is that they are a pagan group. They are not going to care if our guys are walking around without shirts on or if we have girls with um, their boobs popping out of a corset. Um, they, they are actually wilder than we are and we are the cons conservative ones compared to them. So not to say that we aren't going to continue to follow that AmpGuard is a family friendly and we are not opening up ourselves you know, to wild debauchery at AmpGuard events, but we, we do not have to worry about being reported for who we are. Um, and that's something I think that's, that's we can't buy. Um, I'm not 100% sure, Ryan just asked if this is something the board can decide without populist input. I'm not really sure if that's true, but as, as of yet, it's really our only option. Um, they can handle spring war, they can handle our minor events. They have other things that they can offer us. Like if a company wants to um, create their own camping area, um, then the camping area, they can pay $120 a year and go carve out their own area and that is their area that no one else can use, no matter who's on the site, whether the owners are there or whether it's the Spirit Haven group or, or us, no one else can use that. Um, the, the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the chat and, and I'll get back to you and Ryan just a second. Um, so um, the they also, they, we walked the site. One thing we are concerned about is they did make us a lot of promises and we wanna make sure that they're going to follow through on those promises. For instance, the battleground, um, the battlefield, Dolan walked it, looked at it. Um, it would be, it would work, but it does need to be expanded a little bit. They're willing to help us do that. They're willing to work with us on that. So again, it's a matter of, um, you know, are they really going to come through with all their promises? But they are very eager. So um, uh, Ryan's question, is it something that the board can decide without populist input? Um, I'm not really sure on that one, but at this time... I can answer that, Cyril. Okay. I can answer that as well. The, uh, uh, the... Go ahead. So whatever site we use for events is purely the monarch's discretion. Second to that, if it would include a contract, that's when it goes under BOD. So that's, that's the skinny of it is, no, we don't need populist input. It's nice, but we don't need it. Okay. It, well, it's, it's absolutely not required. Uh, the only thing is bids are what determine the site. So the BOD is going to sign off on Spring War bids. And if the, the site's unacceptable, we'll either request an updated bid or we'll deny the bid. So uh, no populist review is necessary. No all thing is required. Um, and to go on with that, they want a contract. They want a very explicit, detailed contract. They, I, I, we agree with them that a contract protect, protects us all. Um, and, and right now, the thing that we're initially kicking around is, you know, we want to have a test event there. Let's see how it goes before we sign anything. Then, I mean, this is theoretical. And then we would, um, you know, again, test, uh, test to see how it goes. And then we look at a short-term contract for like three events in a spring war. Let's see how that goes. And then depending on how that turns out, then we look at longer term contracts. And again, the uh, the prices are very reasonable, but again, with, if we currently, the current prices are reasonable, but if we have a contract, they're willing to come down. So that's the point of negotiation. I had reached out to their board uh, about a week, uh, not long ago to create two, so we could set up a Zoom meeting with our board and their board. Um, to discuss, you know, negotiations and start the ball actually rolling. They have not responded yet. Um, so as soon as I get word from them, we'll set up a meeting with us and them so that we can actually start, you know, again, we're all hampered by COVID. You know, we would like to have an event in November. That is always the goal, an in-person event. If, if we can't have one, we'll have another online event, which Claudia did an absolutely amazing job on. So, uh, you know, we're all hampered by COVID and it's a lot of still magic eight ball wait and see. We don't know what's going to happen. But I always, as Monarch, I want us to be ready for every contingency. So when I do want to have online uh, person bids for November, you know, get that ready so that if we can have event, we're ready for it. If we can't have an in-person event, I want to do an online bid so that we're ready for that contingency. We, it doesn't, we need to be ready for both. Same thing with spring war. We don't know at this point whether we can have a, an event at all 
but we want to have a plan in, in ready so that if we can, we're ready for it and not just, oh, well, we forgot to plan it, so we're not going to do it this year. Um, questions from uh, Miranda to answer the people they've worked with there. I know several people from besides Miranda, Harley's been there too with different, uh, and they like the site. The on-site amenities, they're rougher than we're used to. I'm not going to lie. We're not going to sugarcoat this. Uh, they don't, they do have, um, we, we would have porta potties and then they do have rudimentary showers. They have a kitchen that's, uh, uh, and then they do have some permanent buildings we'd be able to use for ANS. They have a stage. They have the biggest fire pit for a bardic that I've ever seen. Um, they have plenty of space. It's over a hundred acres. I think it was like 109. I can't remember the not, the, the 101, 101 acres. Um, some of it, uh, some of it is still um, needing to be cleared out. But uh, again, they have they have cool things that you know make up for maybe the lack. We, we'd have to rent showers, we'd have to rent porta potties, and eventually, if we decide to to make it long term, we'd want to build a shower house out there, which they're amenable to doing. They even offered use of a a, a warehouse for us to store our stuff um, out there on site. They have, um, it's a two gate thing. So those of us that work gate, it's really exciting because people who come in the middle of the night can drive up and park their car outside the inner gate. Yeah, they have a place where we can store our stuff already. We wouldn't even have to run a storage unit anymore. Um, so uh, they, that anyone who comes in the middle of the night can park their car at the inner gate, but they can't and walk in and camp, but they wouldn't be able to, um, move their car in. So gate would not have to be open all night. Plus there is a, a little gate shack at the gate because they run events too. And so they have a gate shack for people running gate. That's a little building meant for gate. They also have a concession stand next to the battlefield that we would use. We are talking about using as a hydration station, but also let's sell concessions there. Um, so uh, let's sell concessions there and make that uh, another fundraiser for us. We could sell ice. They have an ice um, freezer there that we could actually, it's not a machine because it doesn't make the ice. It's an ice freezer. We'd have to buy the ice and stock the ice, but we could sell ice ourselves instead of people having to go to town to buy ice. They, could, they have wood there we could purchase. We could purchase and then resell at a higher rate to make some money off selling wood. Um, primary concern is um, it's, it's out there. It's it's a good 20 minutes away from the closest hotels and restaurants. There is a little bar slash convenience store a five minute drive away that we that um, would be able to do, um, you know, if you wanted to go get a drink or a hamburger, but it is 20 minutes away from uh, Flatown. It is 20 minutes away from the nearest hotels and restaurants. Um, it's it's also right now. I mean, it's it's more rustic than Lone Star. That's when I say make do, because I'm answering Carlos's question in chat. When we say make do, I mean, then if we had an event there tomorrow, we'd have to rent porta potties and we'd have to rent showers. Um, everything else we could is is everything we would do. Um, so the price points, um, and yes, primary concern also is it's completely untested. We don't know. We haven't had an event there. It's hard to predict what. Um, uh, uh, out of one out of 10, uh, that's a hard question. As it stands, I'd probably give it a six. No, he's saying, saying it's off, off by 10. Oh, off of by 10. Um, uh, it was about 15, 19 miles off of I-10, Dolan and I, because we, we got there early and we wanted to scout to see how long it would take us to get to a hotel. So we kind of, uh, we, we, we did a lot of recon and then we looked for grocery stores and we looked for restaurants and that's about an 18 minute drive. Uh, one of the other downfalls is that we would have to really have security Saturday nights. The road into the property is a windy dirt road in the middle of nowhere. And if someone's been drinking, um, it could be dangerous. So we are really going to have to crack down on people having some shots and getting in their cars and driving it's not a well-lit road. It's a dark, windy road. And we want to make sure that we keep our members safe. So we need to really make sure that we're double-checking drivings. Um, I don't know that we need police security and not player security. 
it's just a matter of making sure that, you know, we're keeping our members safe. Um, the one of the things that in the price points that's helpful is there right now, and this is the non negotiated price is um, $10 a head, which is about what it was at Lone Star. The main difference is in Spring War, Lone Star called, charged us $10 a head per night per person. This group would charge us $10 a head per event. So if someone comes to Spring War and is there all four nights, we're only getting charged the $10 rather than 40 for them to be there all four nights. So one of the drawbacks is there's no cabins. So we would not have the income from cabins. Um, that would be, so we're looking for other, as, other ways to add, have added revenue besides just gate, which is the selling the ice, selling the um, concessions, selling firewood. Um, we could still have golf carts. They're not necessarily needed. It's a flat site. There's no hill that someone has to go up and down. So it'd be easier for our people who are need special accommodations to get around. It's flat. It's um, it, it does have, um, so we could rent carts for spring war. They are not going to be necessary. Um, yes, gas golf carts and ETVs are allowed. We can, it does, we're not restricted to electric anymore because uh, we are not, we're not on the bank of the Colorado river anymore. Um, I'm trying to think what else um, it's, uh, there was another point that I was going to bring want, up and I just forgot. You want Dolan to talk about the ditch field or the plate battlefield? Well, I already said that it, it would make do, but it needs to be expanded a little bit. We need to cut okay. back some of the brush. Sorry, and I missed that. Said they were more than happy to let us do that. Uh, oh, the RV hookups. It does have uh, a lot more RV electric hookups. It does not have sewer but it does have a row of RV hookups uh, and there are a lot more electric stations um, than were at the, on the field end of, of Lone Star. You know, up in the cabins, they had outlets outside of all the cabins, but down by the field, there was very limited electricity. They do have more electricity available and Wi-Fi. They have at the concession stand by the um, Ditch field, there is a Wi Fi system set up, so we would be able to um, have Wi Fi there. Are there any other questions? I may have missed it. Did you talk about the kitchen? The kitchen is basic. We would have access to it. We would also, you know, we, they would want us to take care of it, make sure that, you know, we leave it the way we found it. Um, it's not fancy and it's not commercial. It's very small. It has a, um, a, I don't know what you call it, a residential oven, not a, con not a commercial oven. Um, it has a residential oven. It has a convection oven or a stove, you know, oven stove combo, a convection oven, and it has some things. Um, I, I don't know that it's adequate to prepare. It's, it's not adequate to prepare feast for 300 people. So um, the, like the Raiders would probably still need to bring their pit if they were doing the feast. Dump station um, is. Are you we would have to rent a dumpster from the same company we get the porta potties for. Or if you're talking about RV dump station, no, they don't have that. Uh, fire pits are fine as long as they're in a established fire pit um, or above ground fire pit. They again, we can't just light a fire on the ground. I've RV. No, we do. Ha we have electricity for RVs, and that's it. We don't have a water sewage, and we don't have a dump station which is still better than what we, it's the same as what we had at Lone Star. They didn't have RV stuff either. Um, any other questions? A write-up so, on the site. I don't know what you mean by a write-up, but sure, I can try to describe it. Ryan. I was just saying, I think, I think so far everything looks. You cut out. Yeah, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, we can now. Yeah, sorry. I, I think everything looks really good so far. There's some stuff to tweak. Um, the, the biggest miss, not miss, but the biggest, uh, uh, uh thing that we're not going to have going forward might be the cabins, right? So, right. It's the cabins. There are no cabins. That is a uh, definite, but there's no cabins in any of the sites we were looking at. Yeah. So I'm also saying that, uh, from this point going forward, from the board's perspective, I think this is something we should absolutely pursue. Um, <clears throat> I also don't think we have a lot of options we don't. Um, in, in the few months leading up to spring war. So I don't know if this takes a vote or where we're at, but I think we should, 
I think we should absolutely pursue this. It does not take a vote. All it takes is whoever submits the bid to include this in their bid, and then the BOD will look at that for a spring war bid. Uh, Cyril and I are still planning on having a couple conversations with them uh, with the actual site before spring war and even before in rain, just in case we can have an in rain event. Uh, if we can do an in rain event, our goal is to have it there as a test run so people can come out, see the site, see, see the beauty that we see it. Right, it's a diamond in the rough, but there's so much potential here. Uh, if we can't do an in-rain event, then we're down to spring war, oh, shot in the dark. Well, we'll try to have an event in February, but again, if there's things that need to be done, like clearing the field, it doesn't give us a lot of time. And I know Brett was, he, you know, I, I love Brett. He was like, that's fine. We can make it happen. And I'm like, well, there are years when it rains a lot in February. And if it rains every weekend from, from our event to spring war, we're not going to be able to get a lot of that work done. So I, I would love to be able to have an event there in November. I don't know if that's going to happen. But hell, at this point, we don't know if anything's going to happen. But yeah, so. Yep. I mean, there's a chance spring war won't happen just because of COVID still. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> So um, any other questions, any other, more smiling, I'll try to smile, yay. Um, who wins the election? Well, yeah, I don't wanna get into national politics. Amp guard politics are deadly enough. So, um, <laughs> okay, so, uh, all right. And then Erica, to answer your question, sure, I can, I can do a write up on the site if that would, if you would like that, that's fine. So, Surreal, there's a, the notes that I took and posted to the BOD. You're welcome to butcher those and cut them up and make them pretty. That's a good start. <laughs> okay. I'm writing it down. Any other questions on the site, spring war concerns, stuff like that? We've got a few extra minutes. We can air them out here if anybody wants to chat about it. I had a question. Um, what is it? Uh, when do we get too much rain? Uh, what's the cars getting stuck thing there? Like, is it better paved, less paved? Does it swamp out there? Parts of it are swampy. The parts that are not uh, improved, and that's the back end that they're like, don't go back there. The other parts are adequate. Um, they're not going to be great. I wouldn't suggest um, parking your car. I mean, I haven't really been out there when it's been super duper rainy. They've said they've been out there when it's super duper rainy and it's never flooded. So, um, I, you know, this is one of the things that it's experienced is, you know, we don't know yet. I'll ask around my, uh, my pagan group. They do all sorts of uh, camping events out there. And I remember some of them talking about it, it raining at those events. So I'll, uh, I'll ask our religious group what they uh, have experienced out there and see if I can pass that on. And they've had big events there. They had a, a what's called freezer burn, which was a Burning Man event that had over a thousand people. So, I mean, they can hold our group. And there's a big parking lot area by the front gate. Um, and uh, so it's just a matter of, um, no, we will not have double booking situations. That was one of the things that they offered. Yeah, uh, Torque already answered it. They offered us priority. If we book an event, we are we would be their partner. And the, if and so they would never book another event while we are there. That's that's you know. Uh, if you want to go to one of their events, Carlos, you are welcome to go to one of their events. Uh, we are not going to have nudity at our events. Uh, again, Amp Guard's still family friendly, technically by the book. <laughs> so yeah. These are good questions. And ever since she got engaged, she's uh, been anti-nudity. I don't know what that's about, sir. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just know that I can see. I, I, I just know that some of the more militant, or not militant, more S, I don't want to do that either. Some of the more very. Um... Yeah, you should probably let it go. Yeah, we should just let it go. I can, when they I do have that events that, well that with involve... Be. Let's just put it that way. I don't think the calm, some of these kingdoms that are very, very politically correct would be horrified if we had a, a, nude, a nude event. <laughs> Whenever they do have nudity at their events, they do have a section where the nudity can happen and a section where it can't. So people aren't allowed to just walk around the entire site nude. Right. 
Yeah, we saw all kinds of sites, big signs saying clothing optional, past this part, et cetera. So it's a really neat place. I like it a lot. They made me put my shirt back on, though. <laughs> we did not. You lie. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Besides, it was uh, 101 degrees, and we were all sweating to death. Chewy will fan you off with his helicopter, apparently. So. Oh, Lord. Okay. All right, that's uh, that's the info on the site. It's a great site. Uh, you guys are welcome to go out there and look at it too. They they want our business. They want us to come out there, and they're nice people. Plus, one of the ladies that runs the site is a former uh, White Rose out of the Emerald Hills, right? No, she's Sable Pride from Emerald. Sable Emerald. Pride, yeah. From the nineties, uh, and she was like, "Yeah, we know who y'all are. We know your bad laundry." And I was like, "Oh shit, <laughs> yeah, you do." <laughs> if you're, you're <laughs> The site is Spirit Haven Ranch, if I remember right. Yes, Disney Spirit Haven Ranch yeah. in Platonia, Texas. Sable Pride is an EH that's really close with the Corsairs. Yeah. All right, so next topic. Uh, one of the things that we want to look at from the BOD, well, we don't, I, I don't know her amp card name, Dizzy, sorry. Uh, one of the things we want to look at from the BOD is expanding our offerings as far as merchandise. The one year that we really did a lot of merchandise for Spring War, it was great. Everybody had amazing designs. There was the uh, the, the shirts, the stockings. Uh, there were a couple other things. We want to start looking at offering from the AmpGuard CK website uh, various items. And we're kind of coming to, I think that is the right group. Uh, Ryan, we're coming to the, the kingdom to ask what you guys want, right? We know that patches and part patches are, are important. Uh, some of the things that we've been thinking about is obviously a CK patch, the part patches, but award patches as well. You know, if uh, you get your warlord, maybe a nice little warlord patch that represents the CK warlords only. Uh, class patches, if you hit six level class, you'd be allowed to go ahead and purchase that class patch and you could wear it on your garb. Uh, obviously, CK shirts, CK hats, and Spring War merchandise, as much Spring War merchandise as we can put out there. So if you have ideas on merchandise that you would like to see available, both for acquisition and, and gifts as part of the award ceremony, let us know. We're open to your ideas. If, if we find something that you're really interested in happening, then we'll make it happen. And yes, Carlos, uh, exactly like Girl Scout sashes. Put it on your guard, put it on belt favors, put it on whatever you want. But we're trying to equip you with kind of standardized kingdom level awards. One of the things I really like the idea of is those kingdom level only awards like your 7th, 8th, ninth, and, and Masterhood not being available for purchase so much, but uh, available as you get those awards at the kingdom events. Here's your patch. No one else can just buy this. They have to earn it. If you've already earned it, maybe then we'll sell you one or something. But uh, That's what I'm thinking on e-commerce. We now have the platform built out. We can easily load up products and sell them. Uh, a lot of you have already purchased dues on our website. You see it's a fairly simple process. Uh, we could literally, it's a fully functional e-commerce website, so we can do all of that. Uh, Surreal is absolutely right. The idea here is retention and recognizing growth. The reason martial artists and scouting groups are so successful is because they, they give you something physical to reward yourself uh, with those milestones, if you will. Uh, paper's great. The award papers are, are awesome. I've got all mine saved in my book, but something that I can wear on my uh, belt favors to say, you know what? Uh, I am a master artisan or of some kind. Uh, I think that's a great idea. So if y'all disagree, then let me know. But this is where my current thinking is. That said, we... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just saying that this is, these are great ideas and we need to take these offline and really talk about how to execute on them. But I think this is a this is a money-making idea that could, could uh, have legs, if you will. But um, yeah. Good stuff. My attempt to bring it up here is, is more give us the ideas of what you want to see and we'll make it happen, right? I don't want to suddenly just drop what I and the rest of the BOD think you want. We want to hear from you guys. So that Can said, I... we are. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so what is the threshold then for us being able to make money? 
there is a threshold called out for nonprofits as far as how much they can sell versus how much they can donate. And I will I'll basically articulate that well in the future. But uh, if we start selling more than our donations and dues and stuff like that, at that point, we have to start looking at paying taxes. So I will make sure that everybody understands where we're at and we're going to be pretty far from that, I, I feel. so. Okay. Just, just curious, making sure that we are, we're not going to get any trouble doing this. Yeah. Easy way potential. to offset that is to get people to pay their dues. Yeah. Yeah, I think the threshold is 50000 so we have a lot of leeway underneath that uh, umbrella. Yeah. Uh, so, Carlos, you just asked, or Diego, you asked if the patches would be embroidered designs, who would be making them, or are we talking about a supplier? That hits me on my next point on the agenda, specifically about an RFP process. I want to do a BOD kingdom-wide RFP, which is a release for proposal, specifically calling out what we're looking for. So if you are an artisan, if you have an embroidery machine, by all means, look at what we're looking for and throw a bid in. If you've got friends in the embroidery business that you can get a great sweet discount on some stuff, work with your friends, throw a bid in. We wanna have this, our kingdom contributing to our kingdom as much as possible, right? Uh, myself, I plan on bidding on this, so I will recuse myself from the actual process of, of awarding. But uh, if we can get it in-house using our great crafters that we have in this kingdom, or even maybe using some of our neighboring kingdoms like good old wetlands and, and emerald hills, then we should take amp garters and reward amp garters for their efforts and their crafting. Amp garters are going to know more about what we're looking for and I think put a better quality in it than ordering something from China. That said, if we can't find what we need at a decent price, we're probably going to be looking at, you know, China, Alibaba, cheapest we can. I'm a firm believer if you get what you pay for, and if you do it locally, you can always go back and say, hey, your first 100 items were great. Item number 102 sucked. Give me a new 102, and we're going to make that happen. So that's what we're thinking about. Uh, we'll start with an RFP process, though, and see where we get. We'll look at the financials on those processes, see if we can uh, justify going one route. Ideally, what I would like to see is no upfront minimums. Uh, usually when you order from China or even a supplier uh, locally at an embroidery shop, they don't want to do one patch at a time. They want you to buy 200 patches. That's how you get your bulk discounts. Otherwise, it's not worth the effort for them to digitize something. If we could find a local embroiderer with uh, a machine that can do one patch at a time or doesn't charge different, whether you order one versus 50, it, it would be a huge win for us. On top of that, we got to figure out our shipping and logistics. Uh, obviously, we can do it. It's just designating who on the board of directors or volunteer-wise would handle the processing of those orders and the shipping of the, the patches out, as well as uh, if, if 50 people ordered patches or whatever and said, I'll pick them up at Spring War, well, somebody has to be responsible for making sure that those patches get picked up at Spring War and are held on to. So. Logistics stuff, we're still working through, but this is the direction as far as an organization, I, I think we really need to go to grow. You can see the raising of our dues has generated additional income that we're dumping back into the business. We've updated the website. This uh, has allowed us to look at other additional incremental revenue to really grow our system. Just because we're a nonprofit doesn't mean that we don't raise money and, and earn money. Uh, it means that we don't pay ourselves and we don't pay our members and we don't pay our board members. We're not collecting a salary or anything like that. But our end goal is to grow. And we can't grow this kingdom without money to invest in marketing and advertising, which is something we've never done. Imagine the size of this kingdom if we actually did proper advertising. So, Carlos, starter garb kits, absolutely. Anything people want to donate to, we'll... we'll Donate it all to the kingdom. We'll put it up for a few bucks to sell online and take that money and redump it back into the kingdom. So We can also start doing raffles for items that other artisans create, even for said patches and for other things. Any special items, memorabilia, or anything that is created by the artisans that is donated to the kingdom, we can offer it as a raffle for dues-paid members and or at, at the moment, contributing members participating in the raffle. Yeah, that is a huge part that I want to talk about is now that we've got our dues online and people are paying dues, we want to give more value to being dues paid. So just like Midnight said, we want to start looking at raffles for dues paid members, both on patches, 
uh, gear event fees covered. Uh, first person or first group that gets to eat feast, et cetera. Seats at the monarch table at feast. Anything that we can come up with that's a creative way of saying, you know what, thank you for being dues paid and supporting the kingdom. Uh, we appreciate you here. So good call out. Thanks, Midnight. I mean, I'd like to hear from the folks. I mean, does anybody see value in stuff like this or do you think it's a waste of time? I like it. I think it's a good idea. Should have done I, this a I long time ago. I think it's all going to come down to committees that are going to run these, but I, I love the ideas. Um, execution is where it's going to be at, but absolutely um, drive this for sure. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we're open to more creative ideas, too. I mean, uh, these ideas are flowing left and right from a lot of people in the committees. So if you've got an idea or, or want to see something, shoot it over to us, board at ampguardck.org. It'll come to every member of the board of directors, and we'll talk about it. Uh, you've also, most of you have got my cell phone. You, you all should have my Facebook. Uh, I am available to chat. So I want to help take the, the, the organization to a new level. And thanks, Carlos, Diego, for volunteering to do all of our video, videos for the AmpGuard CK for the perpetuity of its existence. We really appreciate that. You're awesome. We love you. If I could give you a fifth belt, I would nominate you myself. But you've got them all four, so thanks for that. Until we get the battle game belt. <laughs> uh, also, you're my knight, and I love you. You're awesome. All right. So number six on the agenda, insurance disclosure. Here's the bad part of the meeting. As most of you have figured out or already know, our insurance is not going to be renewed come, I think it's the end of September is when our general liability insurance actually expires. Our DNO, which is your officer insurance, uh, will expire in January. Initially, whenever this lawsuit was first settled, I was specifically told that our insurance company is perfectly fine with what happened and they are open to renewing. I found out uh, about a week and a half ago that they changed their mind. They looked at what AmpGuard does and says, you know what, we are not interested in, in covering your guys' liability and there's no guarantees that the, what happened won't happen again. So I've reached out to two other companies so far, uh, and both companies said the same thing. We're not interested in covering a LARP. Uh, it, it's too risky, and now you've got a, a payout. Even though it was just a settlement lawsuit, it's still a payout. So we have been turned down by two other companies. Now, uh, Ryan and I, I believe it was Amy both have connected me with, the, with Mark up in the Emerald Hills, who has been running down their insurance and, and has a connection basically. I owed them a document, which Brian, I, I did send you a document. If you can take a chance to fill that out as secretary, I would appreciate it. If you can't, let me know and I'll, I'll try to do it myself. But we are trying to find an insurance policy that's going to cover us by the end of September because without insurance, we have no events. And without events, we really don't have a kingdom. So that is the disclosure. Uh, our insurance is questionable at this point. And again, no insurance or no site, that means no spring war. So our, our actions are in front of us. We have to lay down and narrow down and finalize the site, and we have to get insurance. So I'm going to open it up and let people talk about it. I will open it up to anything except bans and suspensions and finger pointings. It, it's not what this meeting is about. I simply will uh, open it up to talk about the insurance and the situation we are in. Is the prospect of connecting with the EH insurance hopeful or... I think it's hopeful. They seem to be very open to working with us, and the guy that I'm working with is a broker. So uh, I'm kind of pinning a lot of my hopes on his response and ability to get us taken care of. Even if it is, uh, if it happens, the chances of our insurance premiums at least doubling, if not tripling, are pretty much guaranteed. So we're going to have a financial impact at least for the next couple of years on this. But uh, it's the price you pay, right? Can we also uh, maybe connect with the com and see what they have their who they have their insurance through if the EH potentially doesn't pan out? 
Yeah, it's something that Surreal had actually, I think, recommended that we do. And I, I definitely want our new senator to do that. Uh, I'm not sure if Crix is actually on the line, but that's something I'm going to ask Crix as he settles into the new role. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Crix has already shared it with the comm. And then um, Mark Barnes Frog out of EH, he's they, he, they do, he did EHs and AIBODs insurance. So it's a pretty positive, um, you know, again, we're really hopeful. He knows what we're about. He knows what we're into. He's the broker. Um, but, you know, we still have a lot of, you know, our, our premiums are probably going to go up. And I'm not, I mean, I don't know. Is it bleak? It, I mean, to be honest, if, if this one doesn't work out, I, we, we don't know what's going to happen. We, we don't know. Yeah. So, so Mark, uh, he's an amp carter, a lifelong amp carter, 30 plus years. And, and also an insurance broker. So, our, you know, we're in pretty good hands as far as to figure out what the really reallys are and what the impact of the last couple of years are gonna look like financially. But, um, you know, he's gonna shoot us straight. So as soon as we get that feedback and see where, what our options are, then we can kind of go from there. Yeah, I mean, that's my concern is if Mark can't do it, I don't think anybody can. There's not exactly like an SR21 process for insurance after something like this. It's not like car insurance where you can pay out the nose and get uh, mandated insurance. So There's not I mean, a Fred Loya could... of uh, LARP insurance? <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice little Austin joke. Thanks for that. Uh, anybody seen from Cricks? Is Cricks on the phone? Cricks, are you there? One, two, three, calling Cricks. Crix is not. He, he had told us in our chat he wasn't going to be there today. Okay. So, Amy, I will leave it up to you if you want to talk about the COM yearly donation stuff. It's still coming out. Well, I mean, we can discuss it. Nothing's been decided. It's it's still up for discussion. Um, you know, obviously, at the COM meeting, they, they kind of put off the vote. Some of the kingdoms are pushing for there to be... Um, repercussions for kingdoms who don't pay uh, their their annual fee. And then the, the, the actual amount of the fee itself still has not yet been determined. Um, and then, so, you know, at this point, it's a lot of discussion. There's discussion on whether or not it's legal to require a payment for a nonprofit. Is that, uh, is that a um, forcing a donation? You know, is that legal? Well, we're looking at all of the aspects. Trust me, Crix is on top of this, and he texts me every day um, with what's going on in the discussions. And you know, he's doing his diligence, and we we make our voice heard. And and again, people have to understand that we make our voice heard on the comm. But as far as the comm goes, and Dolan will back me up on this, we uh, the, the vote tends not to go our way. Um, so. You know, we try really hard and we make our voices heard and we try to be polite and give them facts and points of order. And, you know, but that doesn't mean that exactly. It's what Dolan said. If, if the CK said it, there are kingdoms who will legitimately vote the other way. Um, and, you know, we, we don't have a lot of power and we, you know, a lot of times we're the lone voice in the dark. Although Wetlands Chewy tends to back us up. We like our Chewy. Um, we love Chewy. We love, Chewy. we love our Chewy. Um, but, I mean, and that's something we also made the calm aware of with the lawsuit is they, they want to, you know, the expansion of the COC is going to further exacerbate the issue that caused, and again, we're not getting into finger pointing here. We are not getting into blame here. This is a business meeting. Um, but the, the expansion of the COC is potentially opening us up for further liability. So, you know, we keep screaming at them and they don't hear us. So um, we're doing our best. We, we definitely make the points heard uh, and whether or not they vote on it, whether or not they agree with us, whether or not we're completely just in the minority, there, we have no control over that. I've only got one more item to speak about, and that is specifically for Dolan. Uh, I would like to take a moment just to thank Dolan for all of his service. What's it been, three years uh, in leadership roles of some kind in the CK, both as KPM, board of directors, senator. Uh, seriously, 
The kingdom wouldn't be what it is without the Lord. Master Crown of the Celestial Kingdom. Master Crown, well deserved. Somebody uh, should get that man a crown belt. Somebody should. Is it, somebody should uh, send in that recommendation. <laughs> Recommendations can be sent to awards at amgardck.org. So seriously, thanks, Stalin, uh, for all your efforts. I'm sad to see you go in a moment of silence for you know all the efforts that you've done. done. Uh, but <laughs> I, I'm happy to see Cy stepping up as KPM and Crick stepping up as Senator and kind of sharing some of the responsibilities. Uh, seriously, great job. That's all I've got as far as a BOD meeting. Anybody else on the BOD have anything? Membership officer, I'm sorry, I skipped you. Midnight, would you like to speak? Um, um, let's see. Um, oh, yes. Uh, the second issue of the uh, Celestial Kingdom Stargazer, which is the, um, the newsletter that has been shifted from the KPM to the membership officer. Uh, I'm trying to put out the second issue. I've put out a couple calls. I'm not receiving anything. And that's the thing. I would like anything. Submit to me anything you would like to see in the next coming issue. Uh, we have our cutoff deadline is September 1st. Uh, we are taking drawings, crochet patterns, leather patterns, jokes, poems, RP, in-person um, interviews, anything, um, even bardic type stuff. Uh, I will be adding into there, um, I guess, a breakdown of what happened here in this meeting as well, uh, no, making sure that it's that. put out to everybody in the kingdom. So this is part of the. This is part of what I'm trying to implement to help bring value to being dues paid and being a member of the Celestial Kingdom, that it's not just a little, you know, local rag, that it actually has some editorial value added into it. So, and that can only happen if you guys can help and submit things so we can get it out to everybody. It'd be greatly hey, midnight. appreciated. Midnight. Yes. I'll get with M. Hog. I believe he was the first monarch of the Celestial Kingdom, and I'll do an interview with him. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yes. great idea. Yes, do that, please. But yes, I was going to suggest from Claudia, who's over here cooking, uh, that we um, we in include in the Stargazer the high points of this meeting, like the patches and the site stuff. Which you know what, I I'll write up the site the site. Re you know what, Erica was wanting a. a a write-up about the site, we can put that in the Stargazer. So I wrote that down on my to-do list and I'll get on to that and we can do that. Yeah, I am in, I'm at Dolan and Claudia's right now. So my, our girls needed some um, socialization. Plus they always cook for me. So I'm like, do, 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 yay. Hard to turn down free hey. food. Hey, Amy, do you know when intents are due? I, I can't remember. Uh, no. <laughs> I'd have to go back and look at the Kapora, uh, yeah. but they're going to be due soon. You're right. So I'm going to add that to my to-do list. Intense. Yeah, we've and got so, at least Monarch, uh, Regent, and, and no, two I BOD spots. Not again. No. I nominate Amy to run again. No, I want to plan my wedding. And then I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'll be, for open transparency, I'm the one maybe doing the Spring War bid. So doing the Spring War bid. So I'm going to run Spring War and plan my wedding. And uh, I don't want to do this monarch I, job. I think I, mean, I just heard her say Spring War wedding. No, That's what I heard. No, Spring War wedding. No, awesome. no, no, no. I'm not. No, no. I wonder if Spirit Haven gives us a discount if we do a wedding there. Uh, we're, <laughs> They do weddings all the time there. They do the hand fasting. They even have the grove for it. But, uh, <laughs> no, my, you have to understand, guys. My my family's conservative, <laughs> and um, a John is going to be scary enough for them. And to have a full on spring war type wedding, they would flip their lids. My dad would have a heart attack right there and then. <laughs> Congratulations to Preston and Amy for getting engaged, by the way. Yes. And Congrats. for those of you that were on, yes, the tab was open on my computer. Yes, we had been discussing it, but I wasn't expecting him to do that. So, yeah. I was. Well, 
I got told to stall. Cla yeah, Claudia's like, I was. He told me to stall because he was on his way home from work. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but Okay, that is all the official business. Anybody want a motion to close? I will motion to close. I Mike. second. Motion has been gotta called. We got to switch out officers. We got to switch out officers. And did we ever vote to oh, approve hey. them in? Uh, so we can run through those votes real quick then. Uh, I need all BOD members to vote on approving the minutes as reviewed earlier. I will start. Aye. 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 Cathol, aye. Aye. That is all the members I've got. Thank you. Passed. As I mentioned, Dolan is officially stepping down and Sai is stepping up as KPM. Dolan is also stepping down and Crix is stepping up as Senator. Uh, I'm not sure of official policy and practice of how we do this, but uh, anybody want to educate me? For Senator, it's never been done before, so. Okay. Is that the Here precedent? It's done now. It's done. Congratulations to our new Senator Crix and our new KPM Psy. Dolan, again, thanks again for all your efforts and hard work. I hope to see you back in office soon. Hey, what are you your, now going great. to do with yourself? Hey, Jason, Jason, that being said, Honestly, yeah. we, we need to uh, figure out if there is a, a, a separation of church and state or what the deal is with the senator and 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 how involved from a uh, BOD perspective, if it's an advisory role or if it's basically one of us or, or one of the members or I don't know how that works from a rules perspective. Yeah, I mean, so the, the idea being tossed around is maybe making Senator a non-voting role, as well as creating a non-voting uh, technical director role. Uh, whoever's currently president has been in charge uh, or in tasked with running the technical back end of the AmpGuard CK website, all the groups and everything like that. Uh, and it kind of takes away from the running of the organization. So in my eyes, I think we should have a technical director. Uh, and I think we should have the senator on the BOD. Whether they're voting or not doesn't matter, but it, we should at least start with non-voting and we can consider changing those two voting roles in the future. I agree. Uh, I think we'll we make that we'll for, <laughs> yeah, we table it. We, we call it our end of range. We just need to have uh, it written event. up and submitted for an all-thing proposal. Right. I'll let, I will add that to my to-do list. Uh, actually, Amy, I will take that one. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Dizzy, I see your question or your statement, but I don't know that it makes sense. So the senator should technically have the monarch role on the BOD? Yeah, because whenever whenever senator was created, it was to take all the legwork, all the uh, back end, back and forth stuff off of the monarch and let the monarch focus on the game. The senator was supposed to take care of all the paperwork, take things to the comm, and to the AIBOD and deal with all the legislation side of it. So technically that should be the gap that's getting filled by the Senator is the monarch role on this, on the CK BOD, but it's not written that way in our corpora, but yeah. that's what it technically should be doing because the monarch should still be focusing on the game side of it and not the business side. It's a debate. I don't know that I could be successful in this role without having Surreal on the BOD with me to kind of walk through and, and talk about all the crap that's going on and, and all the stuff that we want to accomplish. So uh, I definitely think that the senator should be a member of the BOD because it's critical, but I don't think it should be replacing the monarch role. If anything, maybe the alternate regent or alternate monarch roles. But at that point, we have those on the BOD for con continuity. So we'll take it offline. We'll talk about it on the BOD and kind of figure out what we would like to see the future look like. There's also like the membership role, no offense to midnight, the membership role is not very well defined. Uh, and maybe it's modernizing that role and renaming it to Senator or something like that. But there are some changes that need to happen on the BOD as far as roles and responsibilities. Uh, it's something Fogg and I probably spent three hours talking about one night, just how things should be changed. So uh, we'll table it. We'll take it offline. We'll do it in executive discussion, kind of talk about what our ideal outlook for the next version of the BOD is going to look like. That way I can pass it off to someone else and pull a dollar and nope right out of here. Boom, later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so now we've officially transitioned Dallin and Cy and Cricks. 
I believe that was our only vote outside of approving the previous minutes. Can I get a call for closing now? I motion to close. Oh, second. Third. All in favor? Aye. 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 DOD meeting is officially over. People are welcome to stay on. I'll leave the chat open, but thanks, everybody, for your time. I really appreciate it. Good meeting. Thanks, guys, for having me. Thank you, Thank Chewy. We love you, Chewy. Love, love you, you guys Chewy. Back. Anybody got any questions for AI, let me know. I'm here. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Torque. Uh, I am here. Yeah. You, uh, right, right before we sign out, you, you mentioned something about um, changing what the – Either defining what my role is or changing a title or something. Sorry, I hit mute. Yeah, that's one of the things I'm looking at is membership officer is not very well defined. And you and I have kind of unofficially given you more responsibility with the newsletter and stuff. But yes. I would like to define that either, either very clearly define it or mm -hmm. completely rename it and get rid of the membership term and bring in like a senator term or something it's up in the air it's just that's that one role that's official on the bod that doesn't do much of anything uh well i make sure that i'm doing more than just nothing <laughs> i know i know that and, and, and i love that <laughs> my, my issue is that it's not defined and called out clearly with what you should be doing and like our first conversation midnight was here's the membership role Outside of a list of items to keep track of, you don't do anything. And, and your first response was, well, I want to do more. So that's where we started coming up with stuff. Yeah. I want you to do more, too. I, I want that role to excel and really be that member uh, interface and help grow our membership liaison. Yes. Yeah. Not to interrupt real quick, but to interrupt real quick, Claudia is asking permission to stop. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I thought that was a given. Yeah. Yes. Please.